In this presentation, we're going to talk about inventing languages, not so that we can invent one, but to, get us, to give us a better idea of what languages are and what kind of things would be involved in inventing a language. What kind of things would we have to invent? So, first, some questions to get us started. Imagine that a television producer has hired you to create a language for an alien race for a TV show. What would you need to create? What are the different components of the language you would need to come up with? Uh, for example, Tolkien came up with uh, writing systems, um, the history of the languages, etc. What would the actors need to know about the language? What would the writers need to know about the language? What would the set designer need to know about the language? How would the producer know if you've done a good job? How would the producer know if you've finished the job? How would the producer know if you've done a good, a good job? Take a few minutes and think about this. Have a cup of coffee or tea and make some notes to answer these questions. The answers will give you a sense of how you currently understand language and, when, and in which aspects of language you're, and which aspects of language are most obvious and salient to you. If you are learning languages, your understanding of language, as revealed in your answers to these questions, uh, may shape how you study the language. The aspects of language we will discuss next may be less obvious to you and not receive as much attention in your own studies then. If you're a teacher of languages, your answer may reveal which aspects of language you're most likely to draw your students' attention to. You might be in your classrooms neglecting to attend to other aspects of language that might be equally important, although less obvious at first. So pause the video, look at the questions, and think about what your answers would be. The questions I've given you to start off with are not that ridiculous. This actually happened to a linguist named Mark Ockrand. He was asked to create a language for the very tough sounding and acting alien race from Star Trek, the Klingons. He had an idea of what he wanted the language to sound like, but he also knew he wanted it to be a language. He created a language that touched upon um, many of the different aspects of language we will be discussing. Although Klingon is one of the more popular invented languages, there are hundreds if not thousands of other invented languages. According to another linguist, Erika Okrent, people have been trying to invent languages for almost 900 years. So, some of the kinds of questions that a hired linguist would have to answer are, what kind of sounds is it possible for that species of alien to make? Uh, the area of linguistics that would help you to figure that out is called phonetics. So, here are two definitions of phonetics. Uh, the study of speech sounds as physical objects, and the study of the characteristics of speech sounds. So, another question might be what kind of sounds uh, do speakers of that language make? Not can they make, but which ones do they make? And how do these sounds connect and combine? And the area of linguistics known as phonology would help you there. And here are two definitions of phonology. The study of how languages organize sounds into different patterns, and the study of the systems and patterns of speech sounds in languages. So now is the difference between uh, phonetics and phonology clear enough? Phonetics is the study of how the speech sounds are produced and received with reference to things like the articulatory organs, the parts of the body involved in producing speech. Phonology, on the other hand, is more about how these sounds combine and connect with each other in different languages. I'm sure when you wrote down your ideas on what you would need to do if you were uh, inventing a language, you talked about vocabulary. But you wouldn't just want to produce a bunch of random words. You'd want to have a sense of how these words are connected to each other. You'd want to know how the words combine and how they change and how they build. And you'd want to talk about the roots of the words and how if adding suffixes could allow you to make new words. Um, do you want to have a lot of compound nouns in your language? Can you change a noun to an adjective in your language? How can you make the opposite of words? Uh, the area of linguistics that would help you understand all of the different possibilities there is called morphology. 
Morphology is the analysis and structure of words. What are the rules of that language? Does the language follow rules similar to human languages? You might need to be able to answer both of those questions to satisfy your TV producer boss. You might want to study the area of linguistics known as syntax. You might also be interested in studying what is meant by universal grammar. If you're producing languages for an alien race in a TV series, would they have to follow the same rules as human languages? Uh, universal grammar is the set of principles that determine the properties of the natural grammars of all languages with which human children appear to be born and which is thought to guide their children's acquisition, guide children's acquisition of their native languages. Uh, syntax is the rule governed combination of words into phrases and sentences. Now, what is it polite to say in this alien language you've invented? If we want to drink a cup of coffee, um, can we just ask for one, or should we find some very indirect way of pointing out that our coffee cup is empty? Can you say to me, hey, grab me a coffee, or do you need to say, boy, I'm tired, I could really use a coffee? Uh, when my daughter was about five, she looked at some candies on the table and said, you know, Dad, some little girls like sweet things. Clearly she meant, can I have a candy, but she used an indirect speech act in order to get one. The study of speaker meaning and how more is communicated than is said is called pragmatics. Now, when my daughter was seven, she asked me to play a game with her. I answered, not now. She paused and pointed out the window, and she said, is there a truck here now? And I looked, and there was a truck going by, and I said, yes. A few seconds later, she said, can you still see the truck? And I said, no. And she said, well, then this is not now. She was playing games with semantics. With, if the truck was here now and there's no truck there, then the truck is not here now. Semantics is the study of the meaning of words, phrases, and sentences. Would your invented language change depending on who you are talking to? Is there a different way in your language, in your invented language, of speaking to people older than you or to younger? What about in your first language? Does age matter in shaping the way you speak? Some of these questions would be taken up in the area of linguistics known as discourse analysis, which studies language beyond the sentence in text and conversation. So these three areas of linguistics, pragmatics, semantics, and discourse analysis, are all overlapping, but you might need to account for some of them in inventing your language. We would probably create a language that humans can understand. As exercises, people have created languages that are simply impossible for the human brain to understand, but work in ways that make some sense. In this course, we're not going to talk a lot about language in the brain, but in any of the textbooks that you come across, you'll probably see a chapter. We probably wouldn't worry about how the language has changed over time. When a uh, uh, Tolkien invented the languages of Middle-earth. He actually spent a lot of time thinking about how languages changed. But that was one of the areas he studied as a professor of linguistics. If we wanted to have worlds of speakers of these languages, we might allow for dialect variation. How does the culture of this alien race shape the language they use? Are women going to be treated as equals in this language? How does gender affect the language? How about age? Do men and women speak in the same way? Do men speak differently to when they're speaking to other men than when they're speaking to women? How is the language going to be promoted? Um, will everyone have to speak it? Will there be rules that restrict other languages from being used? Uh, language change, dialect variation, language and culture, language and gender, and the politics of language. All of these are aspects of language that are looked at by some linguists and could be of interest to you. Is there going to be a writing system? What kind? Will it be an alphabet like English or Korean? Will it be a logographic system like Chinese? Will it have a syllabary like Inuktitut or, ja or uh, two of the Japanese writing systems? Writing systems are another fascinating area of linguistics uh, which we're going to study in this course. So why start off, off why start off a course on linguistics talking about invented languages? 
Invented languages are often failures, and through their failure they teach us a little bit about what languages are and should be. But mostly I used the question of how would you invent a language to introduce some of the basic concepts of the course and the field of linguistics in general. Now, I know that may seem like a silly question, but the reason I ask it is because it touches upon many of the different areas of linguistics we're going to study. In this course, we will study a wide range of linguistics fields. We'll study areas that you might expect to be related to language learning and language acquisition, uh, such as the sounds of language, uh, sentence structure. Um, we'll also study sections that might seem a little less obvious, sections on meaning and discourse, a, sec a section on language and culture. We'll study how gender relates to ling language and linguistics, and we'll talk about politics and language. Some of these sections may seem less obviously linguistic, and some of these sections may be less obviously related to language learning or language acquisition. This textbook will sometimes reference language in general and sometimes talk about specific languages. The textbook is written in English and most of the examples are from English, but it also draws examples from a wide variety of languages. This diversity is not a bad thing. Uh, knowing about a variety of languages will help us to understand how um, first of all, help us to understand our students better, help us to understand the ways in which the choices our languages make are just options and that there are many other ones available. For each unit in the forum, I'd like you to tell me which concepts you found particularly challenging, what you understood about those concepts, and what questions remain for you about those concepts. And, what other questions arose for you as you read the chapters? So these four questions are general questions I'd like you to answer in the form for each unit.